let's uh, start with our backdrop. Uh, backdrop is uh, created from usually a plane, unless uh, somebody says so different and you kind of pin a little bit wrong, but uh, scale it up. Just like so, go to edit mode by hitting tab. Well, should be familiar with that by now. Hit Ctrl R to add some edges, and basically, I want to add a little bit of a uh, resolution to this to this uh, shape, so we can extrude it and smooth it out. So, uh, once again. You have to go to edge select modes and select this edge. Now you hit E and uh, Z two times to extrude it along the the axis. So there we have it. Uh, once again, Control R to add some support edges. You don't really have to add like edges like here and here and also over here, but I just my own preference. So there we go. Now go to modifier. Uh, pin and tab out of the edit mode and add subdivision modifier. Uh, subdivision set to 2. Actually, I want to like move this one a little bit higher so we got a little bit of a nicer, smooth curve. I mean, like this fall off. It will be a little bit nicer and tab out of this mode and shading set to smooth so that should do it pretty much. Uh, go to vertex select mode and select uh, these guys here and uh, track it a little bit to the side as well as with this bodies over here a little bit to the side and Tab out of that mode. Also, as you may, as you have noticed, like uh, our scene is too big and lax render will uh, not render uh, like uh, b bigger objects uh, the way uh, they should be rendered because uh, it just won't happen. So we have to scale the whole scene down like so, and we will zoom in and hit dot on uh, your numpad to um, to center the camera on selection and like scale it a little bit like so okay so now we have a pack drop let's save once again just in case we crash because I'm kind of recording have a lot of applications running in the background and move it just above the script I don't know it just makes me feel a little bit safer Okay, now let's add some lamps to our scene. Basically, I want it to be a uh, three lamp settings, but with a little bit of a blue fill light, which will uh, give us some acoustics over, over like here. So it will shoot some light, some blue light along uh, uh, this vector, and it will uh, give us a very nice acoustics. If we, of course, we f if we use uh, glass material, it will give us some nice acoustics like over here and it will be all like shiny and, and sparkly and and beautiful as well. So let's hit shift A to add our lamp and let's do area and we position it into the place and like so and so and we kinda want to scale it a little bit down because uh, basically Lux, Lux render doesn't need uh, big lamps simply because uh, oh. By the way, if you want to be, uh, if if you want like uh, keys most to be enabled, you hold Shift and you click uh, these ones. So we will rotate it like so, and move it a little bit closer and focus the beam onto our model like so. Then hit Shift D, left click to confirm to left, left click to confirm to duplicate. I'm so sorry for my pronunciation. And rotate this guy around, and you know what? I'm kind of feeling that we should copy the exposition from this guy. Once again, hit N to bring out the uh, this little pane, and let's do like so. Actually, now it, it it's not gonna work because uh, as you can see, our symmetry line is over here, and it's uh, it's just not gonna work. Yeah, so we kind of like have to eyeball this and. 
rotate around. Yeah, no big deal. Things happen to the best of us. Shift A, lamp, let's add some front lamp to the scene and move it into the place where hitting G to grab and kind of move this guy around like so. Okay, so basically I want the slide to be very narrow but uh, kind of white so it will give us some nice reflections as well. So kind of point this towards uh, the model like so. And actually I want this to be a little bit bigger so it give us kind of kind of more to work with. Now we add our secret light called the blue light. I'll just go to the light options and make a remark of that right away. Blue light. By the way, light groups are very important. Uh, basically, uh, later on we can adjust uh, uh, the gain of those, uh, which would basically be uh, the power, the multiplier, uh, to kind of manipulate our scene. But uh, you'll see it's very, it's very cool. You'll see it just in a second. Just let's scale it down like so and rotate just a touch and like so and maybe a little bit to that way so we get a kind of a time and shape of a time and shape light and it will just look a little bit uh, interest more interesting if we move it that way and so there we have it our lights are almost finished but first things first control s left click to confirm and now I want to add some HDRI, basically high uh, definition uh, ranged image uh, will give us some nice uh, reflections on the model. Uh, basically it's not uh, good when you have uh, your world black because uh, the model will reflect black and that will look completely weird and like not good at all. So let, let's uh, click Shift A and let uh, add a hem lamp and the good thing uh, about Hamelamp, that uh, the position of uh, this guy does not matter at all. The only thing that matters is uh, the scale and say rotation. As long as you, as long as you want to load like a HDR map, but let's scale this guy up. And I don't want to change any rotation just for now. Uh, where do you get HDR image? Google it. I mean, I have no recipe for that. I just Google a uh, free studio HDRI image, and basically, uh, there is some guy who renders uh, those images in 3D Studio Max, and he keeps those for free. I bet you can find this, no, like no problem. So, uh, I'll just open up mine, and as you can see, I play Call of Duty, Crisis, and all that good stuff, but. Oh my god, it seems like I'm not able... Oh, no, there it is, there it is. Okay, I'll choose a number 22. I I have no idea how how different this one would be from the one I used in my render, but I, I guess it's good. I mean, I don't really know, honestly. Now, light groups. Light groups are very important if you want to go... if you want to manipulate your lights after they are rendered. So, Basically what I want to do, I want to change a uh, light group for each light so we can individually manipulate them after the whole picture is rendered. So let this, uh, let's call uh, this light front because it's in front and this guy over here, let's call it left and this little baby over here, let's call it right and we have already called this one the blue light and this one would be called HDRI. Okay, so basically we're all set. Uh, let's assign some colors. I want my uh, red light to be called temperature orange. Uh, basically it's orange fill light. Actually that's too bright. And this one will be called temperature blue. I mean nothing too fancy, it's like basic basic setup. Uh, except for this one, I want to be this one very very bright blue and stuff so we can get some nice things going on there. Uh, basically you can uh, leave all of the power and the efficiency attribute uh, the same. You can bump on the shadow samples, but since it's a tutorial, I don't I don't feel like it's it's kind of necessary. And as you have already been convinced, the final render with shadow ray sample set to one, 
would be pretty 